So, how do you spend a few days in the green city under the sun? Well... Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to spend a few days in the beautiful and rather chaotic city of Nairobi. So I actually live here but for the next few days I'm going to pretend I'm a tourist and I'm going to show you guys what Nairobi has to offer. So starting off with where you'll be landing, you'll be landing at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and as usual I recommend getting a SIM card from the airport itself so that you can get some data and book an Uber instead of overpaying a taxi to take you to your account. Accommodation. I was looking for unique places to stay in while in Nairobi and also at the same time be at like the center of most of the things that you can do while you're in Nairobi and I found this spot called the Brandy Bus in Karen and you guys have to see this. So that is where I'm going to be staying for the next two nights and oh my gosh. Okay, get in. Whoa. So right here you've basically got like a living room area and then you have a kitchen and then right upstairs are the rooms. Head to the bedrooms that are upstairs. This is so nice and cozy and if you come around here, that's another room. Whoa. Okay now this is super unique. So. I booked this place on Airbnb and it costed 10,000 shillings a night. That's $100 a night and you can accommodate like four people here. So I think it's super worth it if you're dividing by four. Oh man, I've been wanting to live the van life for quite some time now. So I guess this will give me like a small glimpse of what that's like. Oh, this is going to be such a fun experience. Transport. Now, there's a few ways you can get around Nairobi. You can easily get around with an Uber at off-peak times, but if you want to avoid the crazy rush hour traffic that Nairobi is known for, there's two options. You could use a Boda Boda, i.e. crazy motorbike, or you could use a Matatu, i.e. crazy bus. Nowadays, it's much easier to get a Boda Boda. You could either book one through Uber or an app called Safe Boda. A Matatu is a van or a bus that's used for public transportation. Now, you have the simple Matatu and then you have the matatus that look like they've been taken out of Mad Max like you've got spoilers, rims, graffiti all over the matatus and then when you go inside there's just loud music playing and speakers everywhere and sometimes you have even like TVs everywhere, super super crazy. So they have specific routes that they use. At the start of the route, they'll fill up and they will literally stop at any point you want along that route to drop you off. And also during rush hour, they drive around the traffic like mad, forcing their way through traffic. It's kind of annoying and hazardous to other drivers on the road, but really convenient for passengers. All right guys, so just about a 15 minute drive away from the Brandy bus, I've come to the Nairobi National Park. Now, if you're coming to Kenya and you want your first taste of safari, this is the place to come to. It's got a diverse amount of animals. Um, they have four of the big five. Unfortunately, there's no elephants here, but I have a solution for that, which I'll show you tomorrow. Entry into the park for citizens is 430 shillings, and for non-residents, it's $43. If you want to visit the national park and you don't have a car, there's many car hire firms out there where you can hire cars. I'd recommend hiring either a six-seater van or or a four-wheel drive. Now, the most unique thing about the Nairobi National Park is that it's the only national park that's nestled within a capital city. So while you're out there looking at these beautiful animals in the wild, far in the distance, you can see the skyline of Nairobi City, which is pretty cool. On the way back home, I found this place to eat some Nyama Choma that was along the same road as my accommodation. Prices over here were really decent for the area that we were in, and the food was actually really, really good. guys and welcome back to a brand new day here in Nairobi. So today I'm with someone that you'd probably recognize in one of my past videos. This is Shivani and we're here at the David Sheldrake Wildlife Trust. Basically here they save and shelter orphaned elephants and you get to visit them every day from like 11 to 12. So you've never been here before right? No. Are you excited to see the elephants? And you love elephants. I love elephants. 
As I mentioned, the place opens up to the public from 11 to 12. So there's a barrier basically where people will start lining up and it can get pretty busy. So it would be a good idea to get there pretty early so that you can be at the front of the line and get a good spot for viewing the elephant. Alright guys, so 10 minutes left and look at this crowd. It's so huge. Yo, dude, I'm so sorry, man. I don't know what I meant to say. Am I meant to follow the plot? <laughs> that was a very, very poor skit that I tried to make. But anyway, guys, <laughs> this is Tayo. Tayo is a Nigerian vlogger. Hello. So he's going to be joining us today. We're going to be going around Nairobi together today. Here they come. Oh my god. What does he feel like? Oh my god. He's like, so rough. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. They're so cute. <laughs> Elephants unfortunately are facing a lot of poaching because of the tusks and ivory trade and this has led to a huge drop in the population and unfortunately this is also leading to a lot of younger elephants being orphaned. Now the David Sheldrick's Wildlife Trust actually saves these orphaned elephants and brings them over so that they can take care of them until they grow to an age where they can be reintroduced back into the wild. So lucky, guys, it is hot right now. The whole point behind this one hour daily visitation is so that they can show the work that they've been doing and so that they can educate people on why these elephants have been orphaned in the first place and how you can prevent them from being orphaned in the future. Uh, so entrance into this place is $5 per person, that's 500 shillings. And if you want, you can actually adopt one of these elephants to support the cause for a minimum of $50 a year. And once you do that, you can actually book an evening appointment with your elephant and have a more exclusive experience. Major, major respect to the caretakers who will actually sleep in the same place with the youngest elephant so that they can feed them in intervals throughout the night. Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah. stop for the day is a place called Giraffe Center right next to the David Sheldricks and uh, we're here to feed some giraffes. Dude, you had to pay such a steep <laughs> price. <laughs> what? Anything for the content. <laughs> so we walk in and we go to pay for entry. Now entry is 400 for citizens and for non-residents it's 1500 shillings. So Tayo just looks at me like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, I made it through, you know, I need to put the content, you have to get the content. So we're given a bunch of pellets to feed, oh my gosh, look at that, so close. <laughs> I came bearing treats, <laughs> Betty. Do you know like him? Hello. <laughs> Give me attention, please, here. Wait, I got you. So at this giraffe center, it's basically a similar concept to the David Sheldricks. Basically, they save Rothschild uh, giraffes and they shelter them until they're ready to reintroduce them back into the wild. Shivani, so do you know, if you put a pellet in your mouth and put it next to the giraffe, you can actually make out with it. So Tayo has taken the responsibility of kissing the giraffe. Oh! Look at that! I got it! Was it like icky? It felt good! You smell it all over your mouth though! No, actually, I, I, actually, I made all this contact possible. Oh look, there's Pumba! There's two Pumba! Wait, there's three Pumbas! Pumba! None of their names Pumba! Pumba! Their names are not Pumba! <laughs> Oh look, there's a Maasai market here. A Maasai market is basically a bunch of vendors who have gathered in one place to come and sell traditional clothes, ornaments and other artifacts. Nairobi actually has the most Maasai markets in Kenya and they set up in different places every day. Some places like the Giraffe Center will probably have one shop with a vendor selling a limited range of items. So I suggest you save your shopping for an actual Maasai market. It's a whole experience in of itself. The next stop for the day is a place called Mamba Village and here they shelter 
Killer Crocs, baby! So we have this plan because Tayo had to pay a lot at Giraffe Center. Uh, we kind of want to save him money over here. So I've taught him how to say Nemesahao Ibiango, which means I forgot my ID. <laughs> so let's hope it works. <laughs> you got in. I got in. I actually got in. Oh my gosh, look at the size of these guys. And there's so many of them. The crocodiles that they have at Mambo Village are actually the Nile crocodiles. Now, the Nile crocodiles are the largest crocodiles in Africa. And we were here for one mission. Just collecting crocodiles, crocodiles. like it's like a normal day at work. <laughs> Dude. Ooh, look at the eyes. I feel the heartbeat. This is interesting. <laughs> From here. <laughs> How does it feel, Shivani? So <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> Seven years? Wow, and it's still. Ooh, it's trying to move. Ah, no, no, no. Oh, what's it gonna do? Chill, bro. Baby, baby, baby. <laughs> She's the true conqueror yes. of the Nile Croc. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Guess who's here? Guess who's here? Yo! What's up? Hello. For lunch, we've stopped over at this place called Mama Ashanti and we've been invited by Darshni. She's from Not Just a Foodie Review <laughs> and she knows really good food places here in Nairobi. So basically, this is a first for me. Uh, we're having Ghanaian. Yes. Ghana Ga I sound like an Indian saying that. West African cuisine. <laughs> Wait, so is that banana? Plantain. What's this thing called? Kelewele. Say that. <laughs> Kelewele. Yeah, there we go. Kelewele. <laughs> oh, this thing actually tastes like meat though. Right? So good, yeah. I didn't feel it at first. The hat they use chili. Wow. <laughs> it just like it just like slowly crept up on me and now oh. like I'm dying. Now your tongue is burning. Wow, but I love it. It's just really, really, like it's got a lot of flavor. One of my main missions for this video was to try out and showcase different African cuisines that you can get in Nairobi and this one definitely blew my mind. A little touch on viewpoints. There's two spots that you can go to to get amazing views of the city. Over here right in Upper Hill, there's a viewpoint where you can come and see the skyline during sunrise or even sunset. The view right there is amazing. So if you want, you can just relax anywhere over here. And right down there is Uhuru Park. The next spot is on a rooftop of an iconic building in the CBD called KICC. Now, funny thing about the KICC building is that the architecture was actually inspired by a donkey's penis. I kid you not. Is that what a donkey's penis looks like? Oh, this view is incredible. If you go here in the evening, you can actually catch an amazing sunset over the city. Later that night, I invited my family over to the Brandy Bus and we had a cookout. My dad cooked an amazing mutton curry over a jiko and we lit a bonfire and enjoyed the rest of the night staring at the stars in the sky. It was like we were camping in the city, it was so much fun. Good morning guys, so yesterday I showed you guys more of the safari side of Nairobi but today I'm going to be showing you guys the adventurous side of Nairobi. So today we're going to be starting off at this place that offers go-karting, it's called GP Karting. I'm with Ian, Wendy, you. This thing doesn't fit me, I'm floating. <laughs> <laughs> and Shivani. Alright guys, so for go-karting you're looking at paying 1300 for 10 minutes of freaking adrenaline rush. You guys ready to get your asses beaten? By you. Yep. <laughs> we'll destroy you guys. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wish. For the record. I told you guys I'd 
beat you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one and a half hours later in traffic and we've made it to this place called Manor 540 where they serve African food and basically what they do is well the owner was telling us is that it's like Kenyan food with a Cameroon twist so like they've spiced their Kenyan food and the other thing they do is offer West African and Central African dishes. So we're starting off with Managu, this <laughs> wet fried chicken, dry fried chicken and Nile perch. This thing by the way is super huge. Do you like it though? Does it taste yeah, it's good? it's really good. It's really good. It has such nice, so many spices that taste really nice together. So we ordered one of everything and like basically every single dish like top to the other. This food is so good. <laughs> Later we went to this mall called Village Market where there's a bowling alley and we played a game of bowling. Because of heavy traffic that day, we weren't able to visit all the places we wanted to but ideally after go-karting, you'd want to go to Karura Forest and either hire a bicycle or walk and get to one of the few accessible waterfalls there is in Nairobi. After that, you'd want to head to Village Market for bowling and in the same place, there's a trampoline park. This place, Instagram goals. When you're jumping on the trampoline, you need socks and... <laughs> that is so cool! What? what? There's a fun fair there with the largest ferris wheel in East Africa. I mean, look at the size of that ferris wheel. Woo! If you get here at the right time, you can see the sunset when you're at the highest point. On my final day, we drove a few kilometers out of the city to a place called Gong Hill. Now, during the cold, this place looks like a piece of Hawaii has been put in Kenya. It's absolutely breathtaking. I've worn a sweater and a jacket and it's so cold probably should have worn better shoes this water is like the dew just entering my shoes and my feet are completely wet right now guys this looks so epic it's like we're not even in Kenya anymore so they recently introduced uh, zip lining here we've come to check that out first time zip lining Ooh, I'm excited. There's the zip line. I can do this. I'm adventure thing, right? 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 Ooh. <laughs> 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 wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Well guys, that was me being a tourist in Nairobi and that basically sums up most of the things that you can do while you're here. I hope you guys enjoyed and if you think I missed any places, let me know in the comments below. Now, if you want to know more about places where you can eat, I have a full guide linked below. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and if you're new here, consider subscribing. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace! Fan of the day.